Tonight we're hearing what people who live and work downtown want to see when one of St. Louis's largest skyscrapers is brought back to life. Yeah, last night we told you an out of state developer purchased the vacant AT&T Tower. Although his plans remain a mystery, Five on Your Side's Brent Solomon is live downtown tonight with what he's learning. Brent. Well, Mike, I'll tell you what, history is right in our back door. We're talking about that former AT&T building. It's the second largest building in Missouri. Well, it's sat vacant for seven years now. Advocates for a better downtown say it's time to change that. Towering from the sky, it's a familiar landmark with absolutely nothing happening in it. See the building outside of my window every day. So it's exciting to hear that something's going to hopefully move into it or at least be developed. Tanner Tucker with the Downtown Neighborhood Association learned a company tied to a Boston based developer, the Goldman Group, purchased the 44 story building that's sitting vacant. I think there's always concern about abandoned buildings because you never know what could happen if anybody could get, in, get inside them. We really hope whoever ends up with the building or whoever's purchased it really starts with cleaning up the area around it as far as glass or broken windows or some broken doors that are on it really spruce up the street around it. According to its website, the Goldman Group invests in, develops and manages properties mainly in the Northeast. These are some of them, including the old federal building in Augusta, Maine. Do you know what they want to do? I don't know the plans. But Alder woman Kara Spencer knows she wants to see serious investment. That it's important that we're moving this in the right direction. You know, um, we have seen it languish um, and um, we're I'm getting serious about holding property owners feet to the fire. Can an outside developer still be responsive? Yes, absolutely. We represent an enormous opportunity to outside investment. I mean, you can't get brick buildings like you can in the downtown St. Louis area anywhere else in the world. It's got one of the best amenities downtown across from it, which is City Garden. So hopefully that'll spur some development in the area. All right, let's get you back live now. I've reached out to the new owner today, a spokesperson saying that they look forward to sharing their plans later. Today, a spokesperson for the mayor's office said they envision a day when downtown serves as a, quote, cultural beacon for our entire region. Tonight, we're live in downtown St. Louis. Brent Solomon, five on your side.